नमो अरहंताडम नमो सिद्धाडम नमो आयरियाडम नमो उबचायाडम नमो लोए सब साहूडम मंगलम भगवान वीरो मंगलम गौतम गणी मंगलम कुंद कुंदात्यो जैन धर्मोस्तु मंगलम सर्व मंगल्य मंगल्यम सर्व कल्याण कारकम प्रधानम सर्व धर्माणाम जैनम जयतु शासनम जैनम जयतु शासनम जैनम जयतु शासनम मोक्ष मार्ग से नेतारम वेतारम कर्म भूतताम ज्ञातारम विश्व तत्वानाम वंदे तदगुण लब्धये वंदे तदगुण लब्धये वंदे तदगुण लब्धये तो वी हैव बीन लर्निंग अबाउट द बेसिक टेनेट्स ऑफ जैनिज्म एंड इन दैट वी लर्न्ड अबाउट आर फाइव परमेश्वरीज़ द सुप्रीम सोल्स we learned about the world as told by them as seen by them or uh, the six substances or uh, the common attribute the samanya gunas which actually contribute in the smooth functioning of this world and create the constitution of this whole cosmos and then in the last class we also learned about the specific attributes the special attributes the vishesh gunas of all the six dravyas so the jiva it has the special attribute of gyan knowledge it's conscious uh with its consciousness it can know and feel the pudgal the matter it has the basic qualities of touch sparsh taste is ras gand is the odor the smell it has and word is the color so four com four special special attributes that pudgal has are sparsh ras gandh and vern touch we can touch it we can feel it then we can taste it it has certain kind of ras taste and it has some sort of odor or smell so we call it gandh and we can see it because of its color so color is its attribute vern so all the pudgal dravyas have these four special attributes sparsh ras gandh vern medium of motion as we can see the river it's a medium of swimming similarly we all move from one point of space to another so the medium which lets us move is called is called the medium of motion or dharmasti kai dharma dravya this in, in short form we call it dharma dravya and it's actually dharmasti kai dharmasti kai and just like the shade of a tree it's very attractive for a person who has been walking under the scorching sun on a desert and if he finds a good green trees shade it will motivate him it will attract him to relax and sit under it similarly the medium of rest is the a medium where we do not want to move we want to sit back and rest so medium of rest is adharmasti kai adharma dravya we all are constantly changing we all are constantly evolving this is because of the time because of the kal dravya so kal dravya special attribute is parinaman hetutva dharma dravya special attribute is gati hetutva adharma dravya special attribute is sthiti hetutva these are the names we introduced in the last class and the akash akash is the space which in which we all dwell together we all live together in that space so akash or space it gives us our own we, we already because of our pradeshatva gun we have our own space but together we all live and that common space is provided by akash dravya so the special attribute is avgahan hetutva we it it has the capability to give us space because it's huge so these are the six substances they have their common attributes they have their special attributes and the whole uh, functioning works uh, under the concept of dravya gun and paryay dravya is the owner the substance itself the substance is defined by its attributes 
the attribute is defined as something which is found at all times and in all the phases in all the area throughout the area of that particular substance so dravya has attributes and the attributes are the phenomenon the special qualities which are present in a dravya in its all in in the all form of the dravya and at all times so if i am jeeva and if i have knowledge as my attribute then i am conscious from each and every part of my soul so my soul is conscious consciousness over here my soul knows from here as well it knows from the toes it knows from the elbow from each and every wherever the soul is the knowledge has to be there wherever the sugar is there ha there has to be sweetness so the sugar is sweet from everywhere and at all times the soul has knowledge everywhere in the soul and at all times the soul was always full of knowledge it will always be so so gun the guns gunas are defined that their definition is that these are the qualities which stay in a dravya for all its duration like if a dravya is to live eternally the gun automatically will live eternally with the dravya and it will be spreading over all of the dravya so one unit if it's the complete one unit of dravya the guna will be spread over all of this one dravya right and what is paryay paryay is nothing but the work done by the gunas so the qualities which are working the qualities which we can appreciate which we can see perceive are nothing but the qualities which are in function are called paryay okay these three things are very important the so the whole structure of dravya there is one dravya which is the owner this owner has infinite qualities we call them gunas and each and every guna does its own function continuously always it does its function that functioning of guna is called paryay right and how we can see this whole process we can see this whole process from this sutra this sutra says utpad vyaya dravya yuktam sat can you see this sutra it's a it's a very very famous sutra in jain philosophy uh, what do we call it we call it utpad vyaya dravya yuktam sat sat means existence or dravya uh, how do i define dravya dravya is something which remains always which always exists and at the same time what always keeps on changing so it has utpad means rise every moment a new paryay is taking birth so it's a rise of new paryay new work and at the same time there is the old work that goes out so at the same time the old paryay passes away it goes off so if i was once upon a time a small child small kid i am no more so that small kid in me has passed away the vyay of that paryay has happened and utpad of this another paryay has come up so that's how i am the same when i was a small kid i was saying i am anubhav when i am now a bit older i am still saying i am anubhav so anubhav is constant but if you match the photographs of what how i look today and how i used to look when i was 2 years old they will not match i'll they'll have certain very thin line of resemblance that okay somehow the nose and the eyes and the features somehow they resemble but if you want to see that okay this is the same person who i am today it will take a moment to realize to believe for some people uh, they just deny that it's my photo <laughs> when they look at their younger selves right so a paryay one entity there is one dravya which is going to exist forever but it will always keep on changing its form that change is called paryay but the qualities will never change so two year old anubhav will also know perceive cry laugh would want happiness would do, will not want any kind of pain 
And the same thing holds true for me now. And th that's how we establish that, okay, it is the Anubhav has not transformed into a Pudgal or a Dharmastikai. He has remained Jiva throughout. It means the qualities are intact throughout this whole period of 20, 25 years. I have been the same person with the same qualities, only the, the functioning of those qualities has been different. So now I, I, uh, I can control my emotions well now. I know more than what, what I used to know then. So I have, I have uh, polished my knowledge. I have learned to control my emotions, but still I have not lost the capability to know. I have not switched on from, you know, moving just like emotionless if I've become, no. The, the traits are the same. My way of dealing with them is different. So that says that gunas, the attributes, they remain constant. So gunas are constant. Dravya is constant. What changes is only the outer shell, the outer layer. And if the outer layer only changes and the basic entity does not, then in reality, there is nothing to lose over this huge timeline that we all are running on. So if a day comes and a day goes, Nothing, nothing changes, which is my eternal self. None of my qualities change, not my dravya change. What changes is very superficial, it's the pariyai. So if we care less about this change and cater our attention to this guna and dravya more, I think there is a very gray area where the magic can happen. That was, that's what Jainism is of asking us to do. So in Jain philosophy, everything starts with the discussion on Dravigun Pariyai. This is the most basic fundamental thing. Uh, and there are so many stories that are built on this. So if I say, I'm, 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 I'm boarding a train, let's say I'm boarding a train. And the moment I uh, put my feet on the train's uh, floor, the train starts to run. It, it just leaves the platform. And I fumble. I'm about to fall into the tracks. And suddenly somebody comes from behind and holds me. Now, I have very high heartbeat rate right now because I just escaped my death. But I am still happy. I am feeling good that, thank God, something else could have happened. So had I lost my life, it would have been really tragic. I would have been in immense pain and then I would have died. But I was saved completely. Nothing happened. No, nothing has happened. But what if? What if? There is a person who is boarding a metro train or tube, right? And when he enter, he's about to enter, he's running, running down the stairs and the metro is just about to close, the doors are about to close. And he enters, he uh, extends his hand to board the metro. And the doors close. Okay, and the metro starts running. What if, what if the train does not stop? He might die. And what if something happens that his only the hand, it gets cut off and he survives. So if a person who was about to die and he only loses his hands, will you call him lucky or unlucky? Fortunate or unfortunate? Is he blessed or not blessed? Who just escaped death but lost one of the part of his body? What would you call that person? Fortunate? Jia? I would say half. I would say half fortunate because he managed to survive, but in that process, He's lost uh, like some of his body, so he's half fortunate. Should he feel grateful or should he feel the loss that, okay, why, why did I lose my body? Should he be happy that he is alive? He, he got saved even though he lost the body. Yeah, he's at least still alive. So, so, so he should feel good or bad? Good. Good. Are you sure? 
Then yeah. what will happen to your solution that okay, he's partly lucky and partly unlucky. So he should feel partly good and partly bad to some extent. I guess, yes. Some, okay, now let's say, let's say he's feeling bad. Okay, Jana? Yep. What will that happen? What, how, will it redo something for him? Can it bring back his hand? What, what? No feeling sad about lost things can do to us. Um, it can also make us completely go. Yeah. No, so uh, what would you suggest a person who has just lost his things and has saved himself, has got his life intact, is alive, very much alive, healthy, fit, just without a hand. Right. So, what should that person do? Should he move on or should he just feel that grief of He losing? should move on. Why? Why should he move on? He's lost his hand. Because he's like, he's survived. I don't know actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he survived and that's why he should move on. Okay, Jia, what's your view? Um, I think that he shouldn't like uh, worry about it too much because it's happened. So then he can't do anything about it now. So he should just move on. Okay. So, so you're saying that grief will be of no point because nothing is going to be corrected because of that grief. The, because of that grief, right? The sadness will only, you know, He'll succumb to his sadness. He'll fall into depression. But there is nothing positive that is going to happen if he keeps on grieving on over the loss of his hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that something that has gone is not worth grieving about. Yes? Can we yeah. Say that? Can we say that? Because the grief or the sadness or the repent, whatever we say, uh, we, we might, you know, be ashamed of something we have done in the past or we might be, you know, disappointed with ourselves that why did I not do something at the right time when I could do it. We have so many resentments. We have so many, uh, what should I say, the different kind of emotions related to past, right? We always keep on thinking that what if, had I taken that decision? Have I studied in that exam? Have I met that person? So many kind of different decisions, uh, different things that could have happened but did not happen, right? What yeah. this concept of Dravyagun Pariyai says is that this Pariyai is constantly changing. And changing by changing, it means that the present is constantly getting converted into past. And whatever has been consumed by the past can never be undone. So thinking about it, grieving about it, repenting on it, bragging about it will not help at all. It will only further our misery. It will only further our grief. It will only further our emotions to go into more negative direction. Therefore, utpad vye, it's, it's the, the greatest pair, the, the best combination of things. Whatever take, takes birth dies. That's the best, best solution to everything and anything that exists on this earth. It is the best policy. If something has taken birth, surely it is going to die. So it's taking birth should not make you explode with joy so that its departure will fill you with sorrow. You have to be, you have to know that, okay, every season the new flowers will come. Every spring they'll come, in every autumn they'll go. That's how this whole nature will work. And if I enjoy the spring, I better learn to enjoy the autumn as well. If I only choose very categorically that I'm going to laugh during the spring and cry during the autumn, well, you can do that. But it's not going to, if, if you want in the season of autumn that the flowers bloom, it will not happen. You'll have to change your desires, the way you are willing, you're wanting. Because the nature is clearly not taking your uh, orders, your requests, your commandments. Nobody is. So Pariyai says that, okay, forget about the work. 
let the work happen anyway every dravya is going to do its work you do not have to worry about the work do not worry about the things that have zero validity do not worry about the things that take birth in the morning and die during the die by the evening take good care of the things that are going to stay in whole process my this body this face this health is not going to stay i am going looking like this today a week after i look differently another week later i look very different today i am alone tomorrow i might have one family day after tomorrow i might not be here in this place so these are the things which are constantly changing and when it is constantly changing nobody thinks about these things nobody thinks about the grass if there is a tree that can give you fruits everybody is willing to save that tree but for grass very few people think about the grass because it does not have validity it does not have much of the value similarly this pariyai is like the grass it will grow whatever you do you you take care of it you do not take care of it it is going to grow but what you have to do you have to remember is you have to keep on watering the plant which at the end of the day gives you a flower or a fruit which makes your garden beautiful that flower is dravya and gunas so this whole philosophy in jainism is that we give too much emphasis on the things that change too soon instead of that why don't we focus on the things that never change and let the changing things change on their own during the course of their time right it it, it will make very 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 easy the life the whole process of life for us so first thinking about the past is not do going to do anything to that past that's done okay now i'm worried about my future very much worried about my future so if i'm worrying about my future how will it help me how, how does it work so if i worry about my future the future becomes good adi what do you say how do i correct my let's say let's say let's say i am going to board a flight to india okay and that flight is scheduled at 12 pm uk time on this monday tomorrow okay you reach the airport on time and when you realize that okay flight is rescheduled and now it's 8 hours late okay you are in the airport now what should i do to make that reschedule that flight what should i do in the airport so that the flight arrives early and we depart early what can we do okay if i can you can something i think well, i'll tell you what people do when it works okay so what some people do they directly they, they keep on uh, looking at the schedule chart they, they look again okay after 6 hours the flight will come and after some time again they they check on their app you know on that flight schedule app and then they'll go to that person and say when will the flight come they, 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 i cannot just believe i have to read it i have to confirm it from that app then i have to ask a person and then i have to look at my clock on my cell phone again and again and somehow by doing this the flight comes after 8 hours isn't it magical it it happens it works right what should i do when i'm stuck in that fashion we do not we, that we don't control um future as not but, but but there is some kind of restlessness that we feel right there's some kind of restlessness what what do people do okay when they go to metro stations to uh it a take a cube or uh, i don't know you call it cube right we have metro trains what what i don't know so so what in india people do it they, they reach on the platform and the train is not come yet so what do they do they they, they just you know on the edge of the platform they just peep and see if the train is coming and they do it again and again and after some time the train actually comes that's how it comes right you look for it and it comes yes that doesn't uh, that doesn't help the train to come that's just um sharing so why Jane go tell you something that train is going to come on its own the driver is there who is controlling the train the whole network is there the display boards are telling us to do yet still though we can't do anything about it 
but we waste our efforts, our thoughts, our worries on the same thing. On that time, during that time, we could have read something. We could have listened to something. We could have been calm and waited patiently, but we did not. Why is it happening so? Because we think we somehow have control over other things. And when we see that clearly we are not having any control, we just try to pretend, okay, let me exercise. So, you know, even while I'm sitting and waiting, constantly my legs are, you know, I'm shaking my legs, I'm constantly sitting and restlessly I'm just looking at my phone, calling somebody, what is this? Nothing can happen in this country, nothing runs on time and we'll brag about everything. Why will we do so? Because we do not understand that the every pariah that is coming from the future come on, on its own time and worrying in your present about the future does not do anything to your future, but ruins your present. Think about past, think about future. You always have to do it in the present. When in present you think about past, you think about past. When in present you worry about future, you worry about future. The, the present, we should feel some pity for it. Nobody's thinking about it. Nobody's feeling anything about the present. The present it's also, he's like that friend, nobody is worried about. Why? Because that friend uh, came on time. Everybody is looking for those people who have not come, who have come late. Everybody is worrying about, why did he not come? Why did he not come? I, I have come, greet me, I'm here. At least grace my present. The present, nobody is worried about what today is about. And Jainism says that, okay, let future happen, take its own course. You have anyway have no option. It will anyway happen in its own way, in its own destined fashion. Past has already gone. There is no point worrying about it, regretting about it. All you have is present. And the only beautiful way to make your present beautiful is to concentrate on present. See, I really don't know. Just let's say, Jia, Adi, Janav, and everyone, Rena ji, Nirav ji, Kripa ji, everybody. Uh, we, we all have been on the road in our cars, in bus, or in flight, right? So while we are on the road, right? We're on the road. How many cars do we drive? One. Right. So on the road, you're driving. So how many cars do you have control over in the road? One. One. So how carefully should you drive so that you will not meet an accident? Out of all the cars on that road, you have control over only one car. So no matter how carefully you drive, if somebody else does not, what can you do about it? Nothing. Yet we have been driving safe for like years. If not met an accident. Isn't it something uh, mind boggling? I do not control, I can, at best I can take full training, I can take a valid license and I drive with my seat belts on, everything well, I'm very sober and I'm driving well. That doesn't mean the person who is driving the other car has been trained well, is not drunk, has taken his seat belts on, is driving at requisite speed. Do you have any control over that? Yet, yet we believe that if I drive safely, I'll be safe. We'll not meet an accident, but it's an illusion. Nobody has saved us so far. We have been driving and it has been just a joy. It, it, it has been just a lucky ride, ride of luck that we have been, you know, not meeting any accident so far. But if you actually ask me or if you actually sit down and think about it, it has been a miracle that we have not met an accident. Because we only had control over one car out of all those cars, out of all those bikes, out of everything that was happening in that traffic. Isn't it wonderful that, you know, despite having so, like, so, so the chances of meeting, us meeting an accident are very, 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 it's so obvious. If, if we are saving, we are, if we are not meeting an accident, that's a miracle. If we are meeting an accident, that's not a miracle. That is what is supposed to happen. 
because we all are just running on some permutation combinations. Things are happening just if if Ukraine and Russia are on a war today, and we are not. What have you done well in your life that your your countries are not on war? What did we do? It's just that we got lucky. <laughs> We can't control anything and we're worrying about future. So if I step out today outside my house, I walk to the garden and in that road, if some sane person drives his car or truck and runs over me, I really don't know. And I'm worrying about my retirement plans, right? We are, we are learning for our bright future, some good university, some great multinational company, some great career, some great name. What Jameson says is easy. Do not be overconfident. At best, you can make your present beautiful. Make it full of glory. Instead of wasting it, thinking for some fictitious, dreamy future, make your present more humble. Make it more graceful. Be more presentable. Be more nice to people that are actual, that are around, not in some uh, gloomy, dreamy audience which is clapping for you in the near future, which is not there. <laughs> So we dream, we daydream a lot. The concept of Pariyai, Dravya and Kur, it tells us that let the past has gone, let it be gone. The future, nobody knows. You do not have Arihantas over here to tell you what's going to happen next. Parents also understand this. Children also understand this, that nobody knows what's going to happen. So at best, what we have is today, and we have to ensure if I am a good person today, if I behave in, with my own dignity, if I behave well with myself and to others, that's a good life I'm leading. With one day, see, if I have to travel 1,000 kilometers, okay, I still, if I have to walk 1,000 kilometers, I'll still do it one by one step, right? I cannot just leap, take a huge leap of 1,000 kilometers. So even if I have to walk 1,000 kilometers, I'll be doing it one step at a time, right? I cannot just, you know, fly and reach there. Similarly, even we have to lead a life of 80 years, 100 years. We do it day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. And that's what Jainism tells us, that we have to be aware of our thoughts that are now, that are happening right now, rather than going into that illusion of the dreamy future or bygone past. No worries about these things. Fine. So Dravya Gun Parya is very crucial concept. If we see, if we think about it, there is nothing to regret about. There is nothing to feel hopeful about. You just have to feel contented that everything that you have, you already have, and that thing cannot be stolen. Your Dravya and its infinite attributes they are always here. Okay, Jia, Adi, Janav, am I clear? Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. So now this brings us to, now we, we have learned, like I, I said the soul is eternal, you said the soul is eternal. I said, okay, the karmas might come, the bad karmas will be attracted by us if we do the bad deeds and if we do the good deeds, the good karmas come. You all agreed. I said there is Dravya, there is Gun, there is Pariyai. You all agreed. But what is the validity of my statements? Why do you want to believe in a soul that nobody can see? We, we, we have learned about these six substances now, right? We, we have learned about these six substances, right? My question is, do we really believe that these six substances exist? Do we really believe that there is Sitva Gun which tells our eternal uh, existence. Do you really believe that there is a Sitva which is eternity to which we will exist? There is Vastutva Dravya. Do you really believe that there is a soul which is not the body? And after the expiry of this body, I will still survive? Do you really do you believe in karma? I, I'm just asking because we have what we have learned is in theory and very, very small number of population of today's world population believe in this thought, in this school of thought, very, very few people are invested. 
right? So I am asking you, though we have learned all this, but do you really believe that it works in that fashion? Hmm. Jana, let's let's take it one by one. Let's hear it from uh, the elders first. Renaji, uh, do you believe in soul, in karmas, in afterlife? Hundred percent. Sorry. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay. Okay. And what is the basis? How? How? Sorry. The basis. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. That's a a big question, but um it all seems to make sense to me. So um, I don't know, whenever somebody tries to kind of present an argument against that, then I can always kind of rationalize it using um, this kind of concept. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if I don't rationalize it to them, I can rationalize it to myself. Yeah, so it, it, it makes us feel a bit more safe, more uh, adaptable to this present world if we carry this belief system, this uh, set of belief, right? If I believe that I'm soul and I might. But what if, what if there is no soul? What if the karma does not work in that way? Because clearly, clearly, those who are doing the wrongs are in the highest positions in this world today. Those who commit crimes are the safest people that enjoy the luxury of law and, you know, all the security. Those who are nice are called naives. Those who are good, they are taken the advantage of. The most, they, they, they are fooled. They are considered to be fool. It's in present world, it's a crime to be a good person. If you do not know a bit of, you know, uh, cheating, which we call in modern language smartness. If you're not smart enough, means cheat enough, you're dumb, right? So, so do you really think that being bad gives punishment to somebody and being good gives any rewards? This karma theory, because clearly, practically, we cannot see it working. If it I think it you can't see it working necessarily if you only believe that your existence is in this life. And, but... so, and so, so, so what you're doing is you're making me be, making me willing to be oppressed by the oppressor saying that, okay, we'll punish the oppressor in the next birth. You hang mm -hmm. on. So it's, it's, is it not the same thing that you, you know, you, you, you're, suppressing the victim, you're, you're demoral demoralizing the victim. That okay, if something bad is happening to you for doing good, don't worry, die, and then we'll see, we'll enjoy the good <laughs> expert. Does it make sense? Yeah, I guess that's not really the focus of my thoughts though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jana, you started your video, you wanted to do something, what happened? No, um... My hair's gone weird, so I'm just trying to set it out and then, yeah. <laughs> well, so what, what do you think? The afterlife exists? What's your belief system? What do you believe? See, um, nobody... in, mm -hmm. in my belief, I think it does exist because, you know, you see um, the person, yeah, they, they, um, they like, say oh i'll just see it in my next birth or i'll do this blah or i'll do this in my next birth and like say it depends on what you do i mean the karma so, is so sometimes so much and we have only one word to accomplish it so we'll just divide it okay in this birth i'm going to do this in the next birth i'm going to accomplish the next things is that what you're saying um yeah oh so, okay, fine. So you, in all your coming births, you want to keep on working, right? Bring someone thing. No, no, I'm saying that um, people say that I'm going to be this when I go into my next birth or what, you know, that's what they say, but I say that um, you might not be able to put the system and I see sometimes like in school, okay. sometimes people say like karma, but I know okay. that karma is like what, yeah. Okay, 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 fair. Okay, Neelofji has a point to make, yes. 
I was it was me. Um, okay. I just wanted to say that with I would believe in karma theory because if you think about all the people in this world, everyone has different um, situations. Uh, like you said, some people are rich, some people are poor health wise. So how else can you explain why everyone has such different lives and circumstances? Okay. And so that's why we believe in karma theory. Yeah. So because we do not have any clear explanation of why so much of distinction in the reality of two people. One is rich, one is poor, one is healthy, one is in great uh, disease problems, health problems. So what is the reason for this? Right? Okay. Okay. Jia and Adi, what's your belief system? Do you believe in afterlife? Do you believe in karma theory? Yeah, I believe in afterlife because um, if you think about it, what, what else would you do once you're dead? Because there has to be something that happens to your soul after you die. What if my phone is dead? Do you worry about this phone? If it's dead, it does not work? No, because it's put gone. So similarly, this body is put good. Why do you have to imagine a different entity called soul, which has to live even after the body is dead? Yeah. So what do you believe? Do you believe in afterlife or not? Yeah, I do still believe in afterlife. Why? How does it help you? Why do you choose that you believe in soul and afterlife? Because, so, I also believe in karma. And what you're doing in this life um, has an effect on your current life and your um, lives to come. So you won't see the effect of all your like good karma or bad karma in this life. So then you'll obviously see it in your afterlives. Okay, okay. So, so your belief that the karma exists, that the soul exists, does it have any impact on your present life? Does it make you live differently than Otherwise, you would have lived if you have not believed in karma in the soul. Yeah, because when you're like doing some actions, you'll think before you do it because you know that will have an effect later on. Correct. So it, it, it in a way makes our lives more thoughtful. It makes us more uh, observant that we are more uh, considerate of others while we're doing anything right yeah. so each action we also calculate it in a way that whether it is a just thing to do or will i be punished heavily for doing this by the karma whatever fine yes energy yes yeah it, I, it not only um impacts on your behaviors in terms of um you know the future impact but it also helps you to think about why there are certain circumstances right now in your life as well like it helps you to come to terms with things and even um like whether it's good circumstances or not you can kind of rationalize why you're in that situation yeah so that famous question why me why it has to it had to happen with me or to me that question yeah, that answer, that, okay i must have done something very wrong in my past and it's okay that I got punished for it, but I'll not repeat it or I accept whatever destiny has offered me back. That's yeah. So it, it helps us calm down. It does not make us blame others. We, we have better and higher peace of mind in this thinking, in this thought system, right? Correct. So quickly, to, to, to make our perspective more, to, to further cement our belief, that okay, the soul exists, the karmas exist before, because we're moving to the karma theory. But before that, because we're living in a world where everybody does not say that these things exist or, you know, you should believe in these things. We are just going to a mathematician. Uh, it's a, it, a great mathematician named Pascal. And he made a Pascal's wager. He said, okay, we are going to play a game of cards. Uh, it's a wager that we're going to play. So I have converted it in a, in, a, in a different setting. We are saying we all are going to play a gamble. We all are going to play a gamble with our belief system. So here is, here is me. That's me, human state, the present state that I am. And I have only two ways. Either 
I believe that the soul exists, the afterlife exists, and the karma exists. This can be my belief. And if I believe this, this belief system leads me to certain actions. What do I do? I believe this, and if I believe it, I am soul and not just body. I care less about the body, more about my inner emotions. I practice more gratitude, more forgiveness, more consideration towards others. I'm a bit spiritual in my doings. I do not keep any kind of anger, anguish towards anybody. I make very clear terms with everybody. I keep everything clean, right? Because I, I believe that this body is for very momentary time for me, myself as well, for you as well. And I behave very very soulfully when it comes to other soulful beings. I know afterlife, so I worry less about the accomplishments of this life. What if I do not have oh, great cars, great luxury? What if I do not have oh, a big empire, a great college, a great degree, a great company that I'm handling? What, what, what if? Anyway, I have to start from the scratch in the new life. Whatever I do today, it will not be worth it because till the time I accomplish all those things, it will be the time to say goodbye. And I cannot even take even a single penny from here to that another space that I'm going to. So that afterlife tells me, okay, do not run after money. Do not run after the things. Care for your emotion. And if I know karma exists, I live a very honest life. I'm good to everybody. I help everybody. I practice everything as if that it will come back to me, correct? Now, that's my belief system. And if in reality, when I die and I realize, I get to know that the soul, afterlife and karma exist. So I believed, I lived my life in that way. And actually the soul was there, the afterlife was there and the karma was there. What is there to lose for me? Will I be in a good shape or a bad shape now? I played a wager, I played a gamble, I chose my side of belief, and the actual belief, the actual reality came in lines to that belief. So what is there? The, the second possibility can be that soul, afterlife, and karmas don't exist. Okay, now I am asking you in both these situations where I am in loss. If the soul exists, afterlife exists, and karma exists, this is my belief. And in reality, if it, if, if it exists, do I have anything to lose? No. I am in gain. Like, result is complete, infinite profit. Right? I, have, I am in complete profit. But what if the soul does not exist, afterlife does not exist, karma don't exist? Do I have anything to lose? Did I lead a bad life? Did I actually miss out on something by being nice to everybody? Do somebody think that I was a bad person? Did I lose anything even if the karmas don't exist? I, I, I will be happily remembered by the people still. So even the loss is finite. Okay, I lost a bit on partying, going to the beaches, going to the parties. I did not consume a few things. Sometimes I thought I would consume. Fine, the loss is there, but it's not infinite. I'm, I, I did not, everybody remembers me. Oh, I you all can hear me, right? Uh, we we just lost you for a second before yeah. a few yeah. seconds. So so for my this belief that the soul exists, the afterlife exists, the karmas exist. In both the cases, one I have infinite profits, and if I have losses, then those are finite, limited loss. I lost something. I lost something on part of my desires. So, okay, I thought that I will be going to a Himalayan expedition, but I did not go. I wanted to have, have a world tour, I did not take. Fine, I lost it, but this is nothing to be very sad about. Now, reverse the situation again. I'm playing the gamble again, and I believe that soul does not exist. Afterlife does not exist. Karma does not exist. Actual possibilities will remain the same. What if, according to my belief, 
the soul after life and karmas don't exist and what if soul after life and karmas exist okay now i want from you okay uh, i think adi has not spoken today adi what if i live a free life where i do not care about karmas i do not care about after life i do not care about soul i live for the body i live for now for present will my life be different um uh, be different right be, i would yes 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 it wouldn't be that different except um if if at the end or the after life does exist then um Mm -hmm. You go to another life, but you wouldn't remember that you didn't believe in the afterlife. No, 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 no. First, 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 first. Let's talk on this. Like, soul does not exist. Afterlife does not exist. Karma does not exist. If I believe that, will I think twice before killing somebody for my own benefit, for crushing some small business for my empire? Will I have any moral code with which I'll operate? I will not. I'll mm -hmm. not think. while avenging because i do not believe in afterlife you are just like a, a plant to me which i thought has thorns so i'll just remove it right so my life will be morally it will be mess and in reality what if i get lucky and the karmas and the soul and the afterlife does not exist what will i have will i have profit or loss you have loss no i have limited profits fine i did many crimes but still people do not find me good nobody likes good uh, uh, people no my nobody likes immoral people even if you ask a thief whom will you vote a thief or a honest man the thief will choose an honest man <laughs> that that's a simple we all innately like people who are you know full of morality honesty right so you will have limited profit that Okay, fine. You did so many crimes, but you have nothing to lose. You just die. But what if what I believe does not match with what reality is? And now I am in infinite soup. I am in infinite loss. So what this Pascal did? He did the aggregation of probabilities. He said the cost of believing this is positive. The cost of believing this is negative. and then he said no matter what god you follow no matter what country you live in no matter which belief system you go for you will be in profit in benefit if you believe that this soul exists after life exists karmas exist and if you do not believe it no matter what the reality is you are in net loss and therefore it is always in to be in safe side if we believe that the soul exists the afterlife exists the karmas exist i have to be conscious about my decision i do not have to worry more about the body i have to worry more about my mission and my thoughts and that will make our lives beautiful fine no so this was the yes in this so uh, first one soul exists afterlife exists karma exists would you um consider the christian view in here where they consider heaven as an afterlife so should that fit into this first belief system um and therefore there's some positive benefit from their behavior no 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 see we we are just we we have recrafted it they, they the pascal used it for the establishment of god okay in his own in his original wager he did that that okay the god exists or not in jain philosophy the god is not the creator the soul is the soul myself is so we have just made these we have made these three points the atma is there atma is nitya and atma whatever does is karta so these are the basic tenets of jainism atmas the souls emotion have impact on the surroundings so these three belief system we do not believe in we are in negative mess if we believe that the soul exists regardless of the reality will be net profit and therefore it will always be wise to believe that the soul exists that the afterlife exists and the karmas exists 
So how does this function, how the afterlife and the karmas play? We'll discuss about it in the next class. I'm sorry I exceeded the time today, but think about this wager. Uh, it's it's something that we have to have a reaffirmation that whatever we are believing or we are discussing, it's not in vain. It's very mathematically uh, cognitive decision that we are believing it. I am the soul and the karmas are there and my emotions have direct interaction with this world and whatever I think comes back to me in the form of the material form. Okay? Okay, fine. So we'll quickly do Jambani Stuti and uh, close today's class. Nietzsche Nithi Nietzsche Me Batai Yeh Anant Utkar Hai Us Ke Liye Chin Pani Ma Ko Vand Na Shat Baar Hai Us Ke Liye Chin Vani Ma Ko Vand Na Shat Baar Hai Nine times from a parent. Padishan me is in Vani Matino Cheho. Jay Chandra, thank you. Jay Chandra. Thank you.